LHS. I'm Aaron Ostrander. And I'm Bryce Kelly. Seniors, we have some important info, so listen up. Please go to the bank to pay your senior fee of $65. It is due by February 1st. They can take cash or check. You can pay it online, but it will charge a convenience fee. And once again, if you would like to have a senior ad, contact Ms. Peterson for more information. Also, don't forget about the upcoming FAFSA Frenzy on January 21st from 12 to 5 p.m. in the LHS Library. Here's a short informational video from the Office of the Federal State Student Aid. If you're interested in financial aid for college or career school, you're going to need to fill out the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. It takes most people about 30 minutes to complete online, and the best part, it's 100% free. And it provides you with access to grants, loans, and work-study funds from the federal government. And many colleges and states use FAFSA information to provide their own college or state financial aid. Before you fill out the FAFSA, it's a good idea to create your FSA ID, a username and password that lets you electronically sign your FAFSA and gives you access to various websites related to federal student aid. And here's an important tip. If your parent is providing information on your FAFSA, he or she will need his or her own FSA ID. Visit studentaid.gov forward slash FSA ID for more information. Your FAFSA can be completed online at FAFSA.gov and help is provided throughout the online application process. You will need to fill out the FAFSA each year you are in school because your financial situation may change. Plus, you may be able to automatically transfer your tax data from the IRS, making the application even quicker to fill out. Each state and college or career school sets its own deadline for the FAFSA, so it's best to get it done early. Since some of the funds are available on a first-come, first-served basis, you don't want to miss out. Now that you know about the FAFSA, you might be asking, well, how much money will I get? Your college or career school will do the math, and there's a simple formula that they use. First, the college takes your cost of attendance, which is the total amount it will cost you to go to that school. Your cost of attendance will vary from school to school. Then, the college subtracts your expected family contribution, or EFC. Your EFC is based on information provided in your FAFSA and will not change based on the school you attend. However, the EFC is not necessarily the amount of money you will have to pay. Basically, your cost of attendance minus your EFC equals your financial need. Your college uses your financial need and other information to determine how much financial aid you can receive. See? Pretty simple. If you have questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. Professionals from the TC TSAC will be here to help complete the FAFSA before February 1st. Students and parents are welcome to attend and need to have the parents' tax returns from 2018. Hope everyone is getting ready for our annual snowball dance on January 25th, and don't forget to purchase tickets. Yearbooks now cost $80 and are still available to pre-order until February 15th. For the personalized touch, you can stamp your name on the front of the yearbook for an extra $15. Name-stamped yearbooks must be pre-ordered by January 22nd. Science Olympiad is meeting today in Ms. Otis's room, C-105, to discuss the upcoming competition. All members need to attend today or stop by to see Ms. Otis sometime today. Juniors planning to register for criminal justice job shadow course next year need to see Mr. Lakeman and pick up an application. These forms need to be turned in by January 30th in order to be considered by for the course. Any FFA members interested in competing in the spring CDE must attend the interest meeting on Tuesday, January 22nd at 3 o'clock in Ms. Major's room. French Club meeting this Friday at 3 in the room through B306. Congratulations to Alyssa Miloski for being nominated for the Player of the Week. She's up against some great athletes and she needs your vote to win. She is currently in third place. Go to the high school sports selection on Tennessean.com website to vote for her. Be sure to vote for Alyssa on every electronic device you can find and you can re-vote every hour. Now it's been a while since we heard from Tony. Here he is with the latest game interview. We're back. <laughs> Welcome to the reboot of this whole review segment sort of thing. This time around we're going to be more consistent content and schedule wise. The segments are going to be a little longer than usual and it's just going to be games this time but with little creative liberties. Regardless, today I would like to talk about a game called My Friend Pedro. So imagine if Deadpool was themed around bananas and he was put into like a cliche action movie that was actually a video game. That's pretty much my friend Pedro in a nutshell. The story is at first just non-existent. You know, you wake up in a basement and you try to figure out how you got there in the first place and why you're there. You end up grabbing a pistol and, well, 
it, it's kind of obvious what you gotta do. You basically start running around this place, getting all the bad guys, you know, and you grab a basic understanding of the combat. Combat, by the way, is super fun. You're able to split your aim so you can shoot between two enemies at the same time. There's also this cool ability you have called focus. Basically, it allows for you to slow down time and then you can more accurately hit your shots. You can also do flips in the air. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like the Matrix, but in a game with a banana themed Deadpool. I made that joke again. Of course, how could I talk about the combat but not talk about the weapons you can wield? You can wield all sorts of kind of weapons. You got you got a tons of, you know, like I said, you start off with a pistol, but then eventually you grab another one and you dual wield those. Then eventually you grab an SMG. And then you grab another one of those and you dual wield those. And then you grab a shotgun. And then you dual you grab a shotgun, then you'll grab an automatic rifle that could shoot grenades, and then a sniper rifle. So yeah, there's a little variety. Another little fun thing about the combat is that you can kick objects and people. When you're about to kick an object, you'll get this sort of yellow arc that shows where you're gonna, where it's gonna, you know, travel along. The only issue with it is that you can also kick your enemy's gibbs, like if they explode, but there will be tons of them and it's just kind of useless. You're not really gonna be presented with a lot of opportunities to kick them at enemies, so... You know, you can kick the enemies directly. You know, if you're trying to turn one guy into Swiss cheese over here, but you got another one over here behind you, well then you can turn around, give him a swift kick, he'll probably go down, and then you can get back to work. So for me, kicking is more of a utility when it's on objects, and more for combat when it's on people. Another fun thing about the combat is that you can shoot certain objects and surfaces, and then the bullets can ricochet off. For instance, there's like a frying pan that you could kick up into the air, and then you shoot at it, and it'll spread, it'll make the bullets fly everywhere, and it'll hit people. And it's kind of cool, pretty fun. The final thing to mention is you can dodge damage. Uh, you know, it, it looks kind of cool. You you spin around. It does mess with your aim, however. So you gotta time you gotta time your shots whenever you shoot people. I mean, if you're using something like the pistols of the shotgun. Once you escape from the basement, you you somehow get a hit placed on you, in which that wouldn't make much sense considering nobody seems to know who you are. You don't even know who you are. So, but anyways, I'm not gonna spoil too much more. You get a hit placed on you. You try and figure out who did it, why they did it, whatever, and then the story goes on and on, gets deeper. Characters say little things that just kind of begin to build a story, and it's pretty interesting. The game's physical design is also fantastic. You won't see too much detail within the characters and enemies of the game, but the backgrounds will distract you from that. It's beautiful arrangement of colors and all that good stuff. You know, you got bright and sort of neon kind of colors that mix together in order to create some cool lighting effects, and it's really nice. I also just want to point towards the amazing soundtrack of this game as well. Oh, I almost forgot to mention that there's these game modifiers you can get in the game as well. You'll see like some floating yellow cubes throughout the game, and then once you finish the story mode, you can uh, open up a menu and activate them. You got some typical stuff like infinite ammo, you can activate all your weapons at once instead of having to collect them throughout the game. Uh, you can also make your player model tiny, or you and your enemies' heads bigger. Uh, it's <laughs> fun stuff like that. You can even, there's even this really fun one that uh, when you activate the focus, it activates sort of like cinematic camera angle. So you kind of get more of that action movie feel within the game. If you're interested, you can buy this game on Steam for the PC. Uh, you can download it from the online shop for the Nintendo Switch, or you can get it for the Xbox One. Me personally, I've just been playing it on the Switch. Uh, I, I think it really helps, especially with that split aim thing going on. It's only around like $20, not terrible. Uh, I highly recommend it for those of you that enjoy really cool action games. But uh, yeah, that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're ready for more of this stuff and whatever else comes up. I'll see you all next week. Thanks, Tony. Basketball homecoming is this Friday against Beach High School. Homecoming week is always fun here, and the dress here are the dress-up days. Today is Celebrity Lookalike Day, Thursday Camo Day, Friday Blue and White, Every day in your second block, teachers will keep track of who is participating in the dress-up days. So far, freshmen are in the lead, however, seniors are right on their tails. Homecoming King and Queen will be chosen in between the girls and boys games. The girls start at 6.30 and the boys right after. And always, if you can't make the game, BD and broadcast all home games live on our Facebook page on LHS Blue Devil News. Also, Homecoming Court, if you haven't already, please go see Ms. Robertson. There is a meeting and run-through for the musical on Thursday after school in the choir room. Musical auditions are January 21st through the 23rd. Make sure to check out the info outside the auditorium and all performing arts classrooms for detailed rundowns of the audition days. The Lebanon Band will be hosting its first ever prom consignment sale 
on January 17th and 18th, and items are already coming in. You can sell your old prom attire and purchase new items if you would like to as well. You can drop it off in the band room from January 11th through the 15th from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. All items are subject for approval by the Lebanon Bank Assignment Sale Manager. Also, the Prom Fashion Show is set February 6th at 6.30 through 8. Tickets will be available at the door and are currently available to purchase online. That's all the news we have today, NHS. I'm Erin Ostrander. And I'm Chance the Rapper. This and has this been news to you from the Wide and Blue.